The one political rule about Alabama that's always true is Alabamians do not like being told what to do. Heck, I think the reason that we are the most unvaccinated state right now is because of that sentiment, because we're tired of people preaching to us and telling us what we're going to do. And so there's a part of us that wants to not do it just out of spite. And you may say that's silly, and it, it may very well be. I mean, that's probably not a healthy attitude to have, but whether it is or not, it's the truth. Hey, fellow tacticians. Be sure to like this video and subscribe and ring that little notification bell. That supports this channel's conservative content, which is good for me, good for you, good for America, but really bad for the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. AL.com has really, on the coronavirus, driven the panic porn extremely hard this past couple weeks. There's been several examples of this. The first one that I'm going to give you is Kyle Whitmire. Uh, <laughs> Cal Whitmire, he sometimes he he comes across some good points. There's there's times where I've cheered Kyle Whitmire on and praised him for doing things that I thought were pretty good. But the past several weeks, and really this entire pandemic, but especially in recent memory, Cal Whitmire has been the end is nigh guy that's just like walking around as an underwear with a big picket sign <laughs> saying the end is nigh. That's been Kyle Whitmire's shtick for the past several weeks. And this is just sort of the latest iteration of that. And it's getting more and more ridiculous. Like this is an article that he wrote for AL.com. For most here, it's too late. It's not too late for you. The situation in Alabama is dire. But a few folks here seem cognizant yet of its seriousness. In less than a month, some South Alabama counties have seen case numbers go from next to zero to new pandemic heights. Every Alabama county has seen its COVID cases rise. But rather than take precautions to prevent the spread, most Alabamians seem to be going about their lives as if nothing has changed. Even in those countries expressing unprecedented new cases and doing so with the tacit approval, if not encouragement, of public officials. So this is, I guess, Kyle Whitmire standing uh, at the Citadel of Gondor going, Abandon your post! Flee! Flee for your lives! <laughs> that really is the kind of tone that Whitmire is driving with this thing. Uh, the, the world is ending, the end is nigh, everybody panic and run away. Uh, and you might say there, you might look at that and go, that's so ridiculous and over the top. I mean, do you expect more from Kyle Whitmire? Not really. But at the same, in the same breath, like you could at least look at it as like, does, does this guy not realize the way he's doing is intentionally trying to spread panic and fear. Well, actually, to his credit, yeah, he actually does realize that. And if you don't believe me, you can read it in his own writing. This is from later in that same article that he wrote. No sooner will this column be published than my email inbox will fill again with vitriol, invective, and familiarly flawed arguments that masks don't work, that the virus is a hoax, and that vaccines aren't approved by the FDA. And that I'm trying to spread fear to that last count. I plead guilty. Okay, well, at least he has enough self-awareness to admit it. I'll give Kyle Whitmire that one. But fear is not an irrational reaction when lives are at risk. Fear is the right response. In small doses, it can be healthy, life-preserving thing. We need a lot of small doses in Alabama, as many as we need vaccines. At some point, fear will catch up with Alabama, seconds behind its cousin, reality. Until then, Alabama will play the role it always does. The cautionary tale. The example for America of what not to do. I, again, I gotta give the guy props. At least he realizes he's fear-mongering. It's so funny to watch the left whenever Republicans talk about something like, uh, you know, they're coming for your kids, and we're actually going to address that later. They're trying to corrupt your children through the public school system, or they're using critical race theory to push their agenda. Like, this is just Republican fear mongering, even though, you know, there's documentation of this happening and people saying that was their end goal with critical race theory. Uh, but apparently, when they fear monger, it's cool and it's the right thing to do because you need to be afraid. They want you to be afraid, and fear is a good thing when lives are at risk. Yeah. Uh, first of all, Lives are always at risk. My life is at risk. Your life is at risk. You, you sitting in your living room eating Cheetos, a bus could come through your front door and kill you right now. The a meteor could fall on you. You could have a major aneurysm. Lives are always at risk. This is always a thing. 
And so the question is not our lives at risk because lives are at risk. I mean, people have died from the coronavirus. I don't deny that. No sane person does. The question is, is the response and the fear that you have used to react to it appropriate to the situation? This is the thing that is not true. And we'll go over the statistics on that in a second. But the hilarity at the end of that of Alabama is going to serve as a cautionary tale. Basically, he's saying we're going to live in some kind of scorched earth, a post-apocalyptic by his tone. That's what you would suggest. That's what it sounds like he's suggesting that the rest of America is going to be looking at Alabama, just shaking its head going, oh, gosh, I'm so glad we're not like those idiots down in Alabama, those country fried rubes living in the Yellowhammer state that just didn't know what to do and completely botched the coronavirus. Yeah, there's a little problem with that. The numbers don't come anywhere even close to the kind of thing that Kyle Whitmire is saying is going to happen. And again, I'm just going to follow the science and I'm going to use the Alabama Department of Public Health and other government sources to prove my point here. So here, we'll go ahead and go to the first graphic here. This is from the Alabama Department of Public Health. And you may notice here, so you can see there in gray, that's just raw cases. The purple line there is your seven day ruling average, which is a pretty good measure of, of how severe the cases are. Now you look there and uh, this is pretty scary. This is terrifying, right? Because you can go back and you can see that big spike we had actually right about this time last year. And then you can see that massive spike that happened right around the turn of the year. We saw so many cases. And then there's the cases today, which look roughly -ish the same as they did in the spike last year. They're actually tapering off a little bit, but it does look pretty similar to the spike that we had last year. And so does Kyle Whitmire have a point? Should we all be afraid? Should we all flee for our lives and abandon our posts and all of that? I'm going to go with no. I, I see no reason to go with the doom by looking at this chart. And I'll show you why. This is the daily hospitalizations. Now you'll see here a similar spike that we saw kind of goes along with and coincides with the chart that we just saw. But here's something that is a little bit eye-opening here. You'll see that that peak of hospitalizations January 11th, we had 3,084 active cases that were being hospitalized for symptoms of COVID-19. Look at where we are yesterday for hospitalizations, 1,848. Okay, so barely over half, and that's after a really big surge today. This is the thing that you're terrified of. Back in January, our hospitals didn't even get overrun. There was an influx. But 3,000 cases were nowhere near beyond capacity for our hospitals. And so the idea that even if we're, not, we're just barely over halfway to where our peak was back in January, and here's the other thing that you need to keep in mind, too. Not only are our hospitalizations not at that level yet, more importantly, the hospitalizations that we are having are less severe. This is something that we're seeing over the entire country. We are having people hospitalized because our therapy has gotten better. Our therapeutics have gotten better. And because some of these people are breakthrough cases that have gotten the vaccine. So in other words, they do get coronavirus. They do get sick. Some of them go into hospitalization. Those cases are also less severe. But even the ones that have no vaccine at all, that have no protection, as it were, when they're getting this virus, they're not having it nearly as bad as they did. Partly, I think, just based on some of the data that I've seen, because it seems like the, the Delta variant is more contagious but less severe. And this is something we're seeing in countries all around the world, that there are people getting infected at a higher rate and faster, but the cases are not as severe. Part of that may be the vaccine. Part of that may be that the Delta variant itself is less strong. So it burns through a population faster but because of that, it burns out quicker. And so that may be part of the reason for that as well. I, you know, 
I can't conclusively prove that because it'll take more data to be able to find out whether or not the vaccine is what's actually doing that, or it's just that the Delta variant is more contagious and less deadly naturally. But either way, we're not having the severity of cases, even though what we actually saw was a drop in the bucket. It was a yawn compared to what they were predicting at the beginning of this thing when they were telling us that we were going to see like, you know, a sixth of America's population get this thing and like a tenth of us die from it and all this, which was ridiculous and was never going to happen. But anyway, that's where we were. So that was the hospitalizations. Now I want you to take a look at this next one, which is even more telling of the fact that we're really not dealing with a massive threat here. These are the deaths. Isn't that interesting? Where's the spike? What happened to the spike? We've got the spike there about this time last year, just like we did on the, the chart for cases. And we see the big spike in January, just like the spike in cases. Where's the death spike? In fact, it looks like it's a lot lower than, you know, March and April of last year. So let's do a comparison here. The peak for deaths was on January 14th at 96. Now, of course, any loss of life by an Alabamian is a tragedy. But even at the absolute worst that it could get, the worst day that we had for coronavirus, we lost 96 Alabamians. That's bad. But this is a state with 4.88 million people. 96 is not a massive death toll, especially when you consider most of these deaths happen to be people that were older. And, and I mean, of course, it's tragic when a person of any age dies, but, you know, it may have been someone that might not have lived much longer anyway. Now let's compare that to the deaths today. Yesterday's deaths, zero. That's not hyperbole. I'm not rounding down. It was literally zero. We had no deaths yesterday. And if you look at the seven-day average of deaths, it's roughly two and a half-ish, somewhere around there. So yeah, uh, the idea that we are in pandemic levels, as Kyle Whitmire tries to point to, trying to say that we are, uh, you know, we're going to be the cautionary tale. There's going to be dead bodies from coronavirus just piled up in the streets, which is, again, he didn't say that. I don't want to attribute something to him that he didn't say, but with the tone, that's what you would, you would think when you hear, it's like, this is going to be a cautionary tale. People talk about this, about how Alabama is the example of what not to do. Yeah, our, our deaths are zero right now. And a few days ago, there were three. And a few days ago, there were uh, seven. And a few days ago, they were zero again. This is not something that in a state of 4.88 million people, we need to worry about. And so what happened here is that the vaccines did their job. This is why it's so hilarious when people call me anti-vaccine. I just showed you the data. I mean, look at it. It's right here. I, I can show it to you, and you know I'm a data guy. That's the deaths that we were dealing with. That's cases. Deaths, cases. Deaths, cases. See? Cases spike up. Deaths, no spike. What's the difference? What's the X factor? It's a number of different things, but chiefest among it is the vaccine. The vaccine did its job. It's working. And that's something that we should be rejoicing in. We should be thrilled that this thing is working as well as it is. And yeah, there are some people that are having breakthrough cases. And, and yes, I have pointed out that there are risks to it, just like any other vaccine. There are some people that shouldn't be taking it because they're at higher risk of side effects than they are of this virus. That is also true. Multiple things can be true at once here. But the idea that we should be panicking when it's very clear that the vaccine did exactly what we thought it was going to do, which is made it to where deaths really from this thing really aren't a problem. Even with the breakthrough cases, people just are not dying at the rates that they were before. And that's something we should be celebrating. You know, it's hilarious to me that Kyle Whitmire and Johnson and all these other guys are, are so hard pushing for the vaccine when it's clear that the vaccine's already doing what it's supposed to do. What's going on there? Well, actually, that's pretty clear, too. And all you have to do is look at the data. Again, this is why I love data, because data is always right. 
So let's go ahead and look at the data there. Ah, these are deaths and cases broken up by age. Well, you'll see there is a, a big chunk of the cases, the bulk of the cases, almost 50%. So 42.3% of the cases in the state of Alabama between the ages of 25 and 49. These are largely, just like KIV attested to at the beginning, largely unvaccinated people. But you know what's happening to them? They're not having severe cases. Our therapeutics have gotten pretty good. We know how to treat this thing. We know to let people lie on the stomach. We know to give people things like ivermectin and hydroxychloroquine. And we know other therapeutic things that we can do. We've gotten better at treating this thing. Then the vaccine makes it to where the people that are vaccinated don't have as serious cases of this. Look at where our deaths are. You'll see that very few, and this is the way it has always been, very few of those deaths are in the demographic that have the most coronavirus cases. That's what's going on here. Most of the new cases that we're having, the surge in cases that we are having, are mostly young people, mostly unvaccinated, but they don't die from this virus. The vulnerable people, by and large, have been getting vaccinated. And that's exactly what they should do. I've recommended members of my own family get the vaccine if they're over a certain age or have certain risk factors, and that's exactly what they should be doing. And those people have gotten vaccinated. And so, mission accomplished, gang. Let's pack it up and go home. I mean, yeah, keep monitoring it, but other than that, there's really no reason to do much of anything else because freedom actually worked. Giving people choices actually worked when people that were at high risk of this thing looked at their options and they're like, I could take a risk and maybe die from this thing, or I could take the vaccine, which seems to have less side effects for people in my age group, and then it would protect me from a virus, which is deadlier to people in my age group. They took the vaccine, and now deaths are going down. So yes, cases are spiking, but so what? The deaths are staying pretty much the same as they've been for the past several months, and that's because the vaccine did exactly what it was supposed to do. Now, as further proof of this, let's go ahead and look at this graphic by worldometers. So you'll see there that we have the highest population in the state of Alabama of unvaccinated people, but that's still only 34%. And so that means over 60% of them have. And if you look at the distribution of who is vaccinated, this comes from the Mayo Clinic in Alabama, look at the people age 65 plus. 73.5. Now, personally, with the exception of, of course, individuals that may have a health reason for not taking it, I think that that number probably should be higher. It should be closer to 100. And for the people that are over 65 and haven't gotten vaccinated, you know, I don't think anybody should force you and that's your decision. But if you were asking my advice, yeah, I'd say you probably should. But the reason that we're not seeing deaths from this thing is because the people that were vulnerable looked at the data, made a decision on their own that was in their best interest, and it worked. Freedom giving people the power over their own destiny and giving them options tends to lead to good results. You don't have to mandate it to people. You don't have to force feed them. You don't have to wag your finger when they decide not to. The one political rule about Alabama that's always true is Alabamians do not like being told what to do. Heck, I think the reason that we are the most unvaccinated state right now is because of that sentiment. Because we're tired of people preaching to us and telling us what we're going to do. And so there's a part of us that wants to not do it just out of spite. And you may say that's silly, and it, it may very well be. I mean, that's probably not a healthy attitude to have, but whether it is or not, it's the truth. And if you want Alabamians to take this vaccine, then shut up, tell them the information, but leave it at that and say, if you want to get it, fine. If you don't, fine. And if you don't get it, and you get really sick and die from it, you bear the consequences of that. But I'm not going to give you a sermon about it. If they took that approach, I guarantee you our vaccine rates would be higher, especially against those that are more vulnerable. And for the ones that are unvaccinated that are under where that risk lies, so what? They're not vaccinated, but they're at low risk for it anyway, so why does it matter to you? If you're vaccinated and you made that choice, why should you care? If you're watching this because you liked this video, awesome. Be sure to like and subscribe and click that little notification bell. If you're a leftist that's only here to hate watch, hang on before you punch that dislike button. You see, I identify as a Hispanic woman, so if you dislike this video, that's literally violence against me and you are now guilty of a hate crime. Why do you hate beautiful trans people of color like me? What you gonna do now, Woke Brigade?